for keeping it quick and chatty. Here's the review of The Fault in Our Stars, the big Hollywood blockbuster this weekend. This romantic tearjerker is a faithful adaptation of the best-selling young adult novel by John Green. Two teenagers, Hazel and Gus, suffer from different forms of cancer. They meet at a local church support group and soon fall in love. Gus is determined to make Hazel's dying wish come true and they fly to Amsterdam to meet the author of her favourite novel. A tale of star-crossed lovers, the film has some interesting plot twists designed to make viewers both laugh and cry, often at the same time. Well, the movie is already released in the US. It grossed almost $200 million. Quite obviously, it's a huge hit already. Uh, it's come to the Indian theatres now. One of the things that I loved about the film is how simple it is, how non-pretentious it can get to be, uh, how soppy it can get to be. Uh, it's philosophical in, in points, it's poignant in certain moments, and it tells me two things. One, it's already become part of pop culture. You know, I was on Twitter last night uh, and I was following Leslie Chow, that, that really funny guy from Hangover, and he was making jokes, always jokes, which is a moment in this movie. Uh, so clearly it's become part of lexicon uh, which is great because it just tells us that you don't need to be blasting buildings or blowing up everything around the world to make a 200 million dollar film it's a 20 it's a 12 million dollar budget picture which is just clearly clearly uh, making waves absolutely and the fact that they could even blow Tom Cruise out of the water at the box office is just fantastic and gratifying uh, to note yeah, you know, I also feel that if there was a chicken soup for the soul kind of book uh, or a really good self-help book uh, to be made into a film, it would come very close to this. It's just full of quotable quotes, the kind of stuff that you see on Facebook updates, you know, gyan about life. Uh, and, you know, at some point, of course, it's a bit too syrupy, a bit too saccharine, a bit too sweet. But hey, uh, I'm a bit of a sucker for such films. Hey, who'd have thunk? <laughs> who'd have thunk? <laughs> So I lost a loved one just two weeks ago and I was ready to go there loving the film, uh, you know, perhaps see this as a cathartic moment. Uh, I must say I wasn't moved as profoundly as I thought I might be. Maybe the fact that it's really geared for young adults and particularly a female demographic may have something to do with it. Uh, I went there wanting to love it. Uh, I, I must say, I, I enjoyed it and I appreciated the sincerity of the film. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, it left me a little cold and a little manipulated. So here's the deal, Fahad. I think uh, to truly enjoy this film, you need to be 16 in your head, which I don't think you are. <laughs> and that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> But, you know, having said that, in terms of movie manipulation, as you rightly mentioned, I mean, these are two lead characters who are terminally ill. You know that from scene one. Quite clearly, your heart goes out, you right? Um, it's mushy as hell, uh, which again, as I told you, I kind of like. Uh, but eventually, at some point or the other, you realize that what it's trying to say to the young adult audience that you're talking about is very something very important. You know, there's a whole you know fascination with passion for life, making it big. You know, not you know not becoming oblivious. Uh, you know, this is one of the points uh, that the Gus character that's makes. Right. But here is a book, or here is a film based on that book that's just telling us that you could be successful purely because you have a loved one. Uh, and it's a very important lesson in this world of three idiots where everybody needs to really make it in life and do things that they're passionate about and look at nothing else besides. So uh, purely also from the point of view of the audience is intended for, I was quite impressed. Absolutely. And I think other than all these homilies and wonderful little uh, quotable quotes, uh, it's also, you know, a wonderful, wonderful exploration of the dynamic between a dying child and the parents, particularly the mother. And uh, one of uh, the most overlooked actresses in uh, Hollywood today, Laura Dern. Absolutely. Just an exquisite, nuanced performance. Uh, the dynamic between the mother and daughter. There's a really poignant scene where uh, she's in, a, in her shower and she comes rushing out in a towel because she hears uh, her daughter uh, just just shouting out in excitement and the daughter is genuinely excited because she's, gets, she's getting to go to Amsterdam. But it just gives you that wonderful uh, insight into the fact that what it must be like to live with somebody right. who may die at any moment. Right. So these are things that really lift the film to another level altogether. Yes, it's painting by numbers in terms of how to, to get you all choked up. There's some wonderful life lessons, like you say. It's a film that really needs to be seen, uh, regardless of how old you are and how cynical you are. What's the verdict? 
definitely a deco. Catch it. Unfortunately, I was very upset with the censor board of our country who are allowing all sorts of obscenities to be aired. Uh, but they cut out the entire lovemaking scene in this film, which is even there in the trailer, uh, which in, in, conser in conservative USA. Right. And nobody thought of cutting out all the violence from Transformers 4, right? Absolutely. And that is obviously perfectly fine to, to watch a violent film, but let's not watch anything to do with sex. I think so far as my verdict goes, it's a complete complete deco uh, if need be uh, or if you're free uh, is weekend ko dekho uh, otherwise uh, uh, not just theater pe dekho go to imdb.com and fir uske sare quotable quotes bhi dekho <laughs> so once again we're in tandem we're in unison we're saying dekho isi weekend pe dekho but what do the desi martini guys have to say about this hey guys let's see today what the janta has to say about fault in our stars on desi martini <laughs> The film is currently rated at 3.1 stars, which does make it a good watch. Desi Martini also says, Fault in Our Stars is a teenage romance that you've been waiting for. Its witty writing and fabulous performances make it a must watch. Don't forget to carry a box of tissues. Movie jockey Mohit Pal says, Sirpi romance made genuinely affecting by elegant, thoughtful handling. Acting top notch. So as you see, both the critics and the Janta have given it a go. You definitely don't want to miss this one. To know what the Janta thinks of other films? Do log on to desimartini.com. And don't forget to keep watching Friday Double Bill, where we bring you the best of the critics and the Janta. Well, that was a review of The Fault in Our Stars. Watch the OMG moments from the film. Watch the full show. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Friday Double Bill.